We're going to do the confection tank demonstration. For this demonstration, you need a tank of water and you can use a plastic box or any container that's quite long and narrow. Um, you'll need one mug um, cup of very hot water, boiling water, and in the other one, um, ice. So we've got a heat source and a cold source. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the tank on top of these mugs, heat one side of the tank and cool the other. And then we're going to put in some food colouring, some dye. So we lift the tank onto the mugs and we'll just give it a few seconds just to um, stabilise. And we've got red dye and blue dye. And we're going to see what happens to that dye um, when um, we put it into the tank. So what we can see starting to happen now is as the hot water is heating the tank, that's heating the water at the surface or at the bottom of the tank here. And we can start to see these filaments of red dye moving upwards. This is because we've got warm water moving upwards. As the, as the water in the bottom of the tank warms, um, the, the water molecules start to move around more uh, because they're getting heated and agitated. And as they do that, they spread out. So they become less dense. That area of water becomes less dense as the molecules move apart. Now, less dense water wants to rise in the same way that hot, less dense air wants to rise. So we can see this warm water moving upwards towards the top of the tank. When it gets to the top of the tank, it's got nowhere to go. It can't come out of the water, so it's moving along horizontally. Um, this process is called convection, hot air or hot water in this case, rising. At the same time, on the other side of the tank, we can see that the blue dye is staying right at the bottom and it's not um, moving upwards at all. And this is because the water here is cold. Um, it's being cooled by the ice in the mug. Cold water is dense. Um, so this water stays at the bottom. What you start to see now is that some of the blue dye is actually moving towards the red dye towards the other side of the tank. And this is because we're creating a difference in pressure in the water. So here where we've got hot water rising, water is moving upwards. We're creating an area of low pressure. You can kind of think of it as like um, less water in this region because it's moving upwards. In this region where water is staying down near the bottom, we've got higher pressure. So we've got high pressure and low pressure. And in that situation, it wants to equalize out so we've got water moving towards the area of low pressure from high to low. And that's why we're starting to see the blue spread out along the bottom. As the red dye moves up towards the top and spreads out, it's starting to cool down. That hot water is cooling all the time as it's moving through the tank. And as it cools, eventually it becomes more dense again, or um, increases its density and starts to fall back down, cool and fall back down. So we start to get this whole convection current moving around in the tank. In the real atmosphere, um, we have convection currents in a number of different situations, um, also in the oceans. One of the classic examples for the ocean um, is the Gulf Stream. So the Gulf Stream is a current of warm water that starts off in the Gulf of Mexico and moves northwards towards the UK. And this is why the climate in the UK is a lot milder than other locations at the same latitude because we have this warmer um, current of water coming towards us. The Gulf Stream comes towards the UK and towards the North Atlantic and as it goes further north it starts to cool, become more dense and sink down and then it travels back again at lower depths of the ocean back towards the south and this is an example of a convection current in the ocean. In the atmosphere thunderstorms can create convection currents so you've probably all experienced a showery, um, showery thunderstorm type day where you often get squally conditions. A squall is a sudden gust of wind um, ahead of or associated with the rainfall from a thunderstorm. So what happens is when a shower or thunderstorm is raining, some of that rain evaporates. And when it does that, it, takes, it needs energy, it takes heat out of the air in order to evaporate and it cools the air. So as the rain's falling, you get cold air with that rain. That cold air sinks to the bottom because it's heavier, denser, and spreads outwards along the surface. And this we call, uh, we call it a density current or a convection current. Um, and it's this current that you experience when you get a sudden gust of wind. Sometimes these convection currents or density currents, um, we sometimes call them cold pools as well, um, they can pick up um, dust if you're in a very arid environment. For example, these quite often happen in Arizona. Um, it's very dry out there and these density currents can pick up a lot of dust um, and are often associated with dust storms. So um, quite often uh, Phoenix in Arizona is on the news for having some very severe dust storms.